Both the standard PS5 and PS5 Digital Edition are now up for pre-order, but which version of a PS5 should you buy and where can you pre-order it from? In this video, I'll be giving you all the information you need. Let's do this! The PS5 and PS5 Digital Edition are identical consoles when it comes to performance and specifications of the system. Both versions of the PS5 have the same graphics card and central processing unit, so actual in-game performance won't be any different whatsoever. Both consoles also use a 825GB SSD with a raw speed of 5.5GB per second, making it the fastest console available. The largest difference between the features of the two consoles is obviously the existence of the disk drive. The digital PS5 does not have a 4K Blu-ray player, meaning that you cannot watch disk-based content or play disk-based games. Everything has to be done directly on the console and via the PlayStation Store or internet browser. The standard PS5 costs 499 US dollars or 449 British pounds, whilst the digital PS5 costs you only 399 US dollars or 359 pounds. So that means having the disk drive is going to add an extra $100 onto the price you're paying for the system. You're probably thinking at this point that the digital edition is therefore clearly the best way to go then if you don't care about a 4K Blu ray player. But that may not necessarily be the case at all. If you want to purchase a game on a PlayStation Store, then you have to make that purchase at that set price, and you have to then keep that game on your account forever. Let's say, for instance, you want to purchase the Ultimate Edition of Spider-Man Miles Morales on your PS5. You're going to end up paying $70 on the PS Store, play through the game, and then you have no other choice but to keep it. If you were to own the disc-based game though, and the physical console to use the disc with, you would have a larger choice of places to purchase the game from in the first place, potentially allowing you to get it at a lower initial prices and you would also be able to then sell the disc after you are done with the game or trade it in at a store to get some of your money back on your purchase. In addition to disc-based games potentially being cheaper to buy and also giving you the opportunity to make some of that money back, they also take up a lot less storage space on the console. As we previously mentioned, both versions of the PS5 have a 825GB SSD included, but with next-gen game sizes, that's really not too much. Using Spider-Man as an example again, the Ultimate Edition is at least 105GB, which gives you Miles Morales and the remaster of the 2018 game along with its DLC, so you aren't going to be able to fit that many games on the console itself, especially when downloaded digitally. If you buy the game on a disc, most of the game will be stored there, with only updates and some files being stored directly on the console storage, so with physically owned games, you might see your PS5 fill up at a slower rate. If you do fill it up though, then you can also expand the storage using a second SSD slot inside the console itself, but we still have a lot more to learn on that, just note that this type of storage expansion won't be cheap. So which version of the console should you actually buy? Well, here's my verdict. If you do care about a 4K Blu-ray player, then you should of course go for a physical edition without question, but if you don't, then only buy the physical edition if you don't have an internet connection, you feel you get most of your games on disc, you regularly sell your games once you are done with them, you think you would make that $100 back from using physical games instead, and you would probably want to make the most out of the event available storage space in the system. So if any of those listed do apply to you, then the physical edition is probably your best choice. Personally, I do have a physical edition pre-ordered, simply because I would just like that 4K Blu-ray player to be able to watch 4K content from. It is also worth mentioning that if you have a lot of PS4 disc games, you won't be able to play those on the digital version of the PS5, and you'll only be able to play the PS4 games that you own digitally. For more information on the PS5's backwards compatibility features, then and click the card at the top right of the screen now. There are also a few more minor differences I haven't yet mentioned that might change your mind. The digital edition is ever so slightly smaller in width, it weighs 600 grams less than the standard model and also uses 10 watts less of power. The final thing that may change which you purchase is if you game share all of your games with somebody. Assuming this is a possible feature on the PS5 like it is on PS4, you can only do this with digitally based games, so unless you do want that 4K Blu-ray player so bad for watching things, then everything you buy will be done through the PlayStation Store anyway, so there is zero reason for you to buy the standard model of the next generation 
resolution system if you do intend on game sharing. Now you have hopefully decided on which you want to get your hands on, how can you pre-order it? Well, stock for the PS5 ran out in literally seconds, but stock does keep coming back in momentarily and PlayStation have promised that more pre-orders will be available in the coming days, so here is how you can ensure you get yourself pre-order secured. In the description, I have a link to Stock Informer pages. This site constantly refreshes itself whilst checking stock at every store available and it alerts you of when a product is in stock. I recommend you turn on audible alerts, turn your volume right up, keep only the product products you are interested in checked, and then leave your computer or phone on with this displayed 24-7, even overnight. Doing this means that whenever there is new stock, an alarm will be played, maybe wake you up, and you can dash straight to a pre-order page. I do also have some affiliate links in the description for Amazon if you are interested in purchasing anything PS5 related from there. Using my link does seriously help me out. If you want to know if PlayStation Now is worth it or not in 2020, then click the video on screen now. Now. Also leave a comment letting me know which version of the PS5 you would like to get, as well as considering subscribing to my channel for more PlayStation tips, tricks and guides. Anyway, that's all for me in this video and I'll see you in the next one.